potentially to win the run in the next two weeks. All right, thank you. We're going to get started. The um, Cuyahoga County Human Resources Appointments and Equity Committee is called to order. Clerk, please call the roll. As a reminder to all in attendance, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed on the county YouTube page. Calling the roll, Ms. Baker? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Sweeney? Present. Ms. Conwell, Ms. Conwell's absent at the moment. We have a quorum. Also like the record to reflect that Ms. Turner is also in attendance. Thank you. And I'd like to welcome our new member also, Meredith Turner. Welcome to our committee. So um, do we have any public comments? No, Madam Chair, no one submitted any public comment. Thank you. Uh, members, if you would take a look at the minutes, review. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Second, thank you. All in favor to approve the minutes, say aye. 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 Hearing no nays, the minutes are approved. All right, clerk, would you please read the first matter referred to committee? Resolution 2021-0239, adopting various changes to the Cuyahoga County non-bargaining classification plan. Welcome, please identify yourself. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Albert Pushaheen, the manager of classification and compensation for the Personnel Review Commission. The PRC approved the recommended class plan changes before you at their October 13th, 2021 meeting. The new chief investigator classification was requested by the Sheriff's Department and the revisions and deletions are all part of the PRC's routine maintenance of the class plan. There will not be a fiscal impact to any of the incumbents or the departments as none of the changes, um, none of the classifications had any changes in pay grade, therefore there will be no fiscal impact. All of them were prepared by the PRC class and comp staff who shared all the information with the department management and HR staff to ensure that they're properly informed of the changes before you. In accordance with the PRC rules, the proposed changes were posted on our P PRC website prior to the PRC's consideration. Um, you should have a packet in front of you. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your testimony. Anyone have questions for our... Madam Chair? Yes. I have just one question. It's about the proposed deleted classification where it says it was identified as a CWA bargaining unit position. Can you uh, say a little bit more about that and explain what changed and how this was rec recognized and how this came to be? Madam Chair, Councilman Miller... As part of routine maintenance, we always uh, look at classifications that have no incumbents and then work with HR and the department to see why that is, if they intend to fill it, or what's happened with the classification. Um, the classification had, has had no incumbents for a number of years. Uh, we asked what, who is performing the work, if it's being performed at all, and we were informed that the work was assumed by bargaining unit positions, and there's no need then to um, hire in that non-bargaining classification any longer. So we try not to keep vacant classifications in the class plan unless departments have a desire to fill it in the future. So we're proposing deletion. Okay, and uh, are there bargaining unit classification positions in the class plan or is the class plan only for non-bargaining unit positions? Madam Chair to Councilman Miller, we, uh, the PRC is only responsible for non-bargaining classifications. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, uh, I will make a motion to uh, send this to full council. Do I have a second? Second, Sweeney. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Hearing no nays, this has been approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Clerk, would you please read the next 
item on the agenda. Resolution 2021-0242, confirming the county executive's appointment of the Honorable Mayor Annette Blackwell to serve on the Cuyahoga County Citizens Advisory Council on Equity for an unexpired term ending July 14, 2022. Yes, um, Director Pomerantz, would you please give us a background of this? Thank you, Chair. Uh, we are, on behalf of the county executive, I am pleased to bring forward uh, Mayor Annette Blackwell for pursuant to ordinance number 2019-002 to replace Danielle Sindor on the Cuyahoga County Citizens Advisory Council on Equity for an unexpired term ending 7-14-2022. And also be with us today is Mayor Blackwell, as well as the executive director of the uh, Cuyahoga County Citizens Advisory Council on Equity, um, Clerk Naila Bird. And Ms. Blackwell's here for any questions. Thank you, and thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to, to uh, thank you before us. Good morning. Yeah. Happy to be here. Would you like to say a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm the mayor of the city of Maple Heights. I'm the 16th mayor of Maple Heights. I am the first woman and first person of color in my second term and in my second year of my second term. Thank you. Very good. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Do we have any questions for uh, Mayor this morning? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, Councilman Miller. Uh, I would uh, first on behalf of the county want to thank you for your willingness to serve. I know you have an awful lot on your plate as mayor and, and your willingness to add this to your responsibilities is very much appreciated. Thank and you. so my question is, uh, if you could say a little bit about uh, your perspective on, on equity and inclusion and how you think we can best move forward to uh, uh, create a, a more inclusive and equitable community in Cuyahoga County. Certainly, and thank you, uh, County Council person, Mr. Miller. It is a quality of life initiative Something I pursue every day as the mayor of almost 25,000 residents of an older entering suburb that just celebrated its centennial in 2015. The city of Maple Heights is about 72% African American, which has changed demographically over two decades. My challenge every day is to make sure I am the champion of the women that lead their household in Maple Heights, of the children who come from Poverty, Maple Heights is about a 26% poverty rate. Uh, we are number three in, the, in, in black infant mortality in our entering suburb. But uh, as a woman of color, as a person who's come from a corporate background and now has taken on the role of a public servant, I do that because I believe that every person in our country, in our role to be, to be clear, deserves a quality of life. The gift of life is a gift. And we should all be afforded the same opportunities to live in a place that's warm, have a roof over our head, to go to bed without feeling hunger. Our black babies should be able to celebrate their first birthday, which is a challenge in the crises, and it indeed is a crisis of black infant mortality. We need to address food insecurity. We need to make housing affordable. Homelessness is still very prevalent among the 59 communities, well, not all 59, but in this, in this county and all over this country. Uh, certainly with the, uh, the value appreciation housing, some people being forced out of their homes, the challenge of maintaining their property taxes, seniors are suffering from foreclosures because of the property tax issue. There's a myriad of issues that those warriors and champions for justice are challenged with. I come with a wide range of experience and a great deal of proven commitment to addressing those issues. Here in this position, it would elevate me in a position to do that beyond 44137, which happens to be the zip code of Maple Heights, but the entire county in, in the 59 communities in any way that it impacts, we should all be champion, whether it's happening in a particular city or just in another county Public servants take the office to honestly, impartially, and faithfully serve. This is another part of that oath. Honestly and impartially, that's without prejudice, without, regi uh, without uh, reservation, faithfully. I think we, uh, as people of faith, whatever that faith might be, have a commitment to our fellow person, man or woman. And so I stand here proudly and willing, 
hoping to be confirmed today to join this very, very important work and contribute in a significant and impactful way. Thank you very much for, and I share your perspective and look forward to the energy and vision that you'll bring to the advisory council. Thank you thank very Thank you for much. your comments and thank you for your question. Other, yes, Councilman Sweet. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Madam Mayor. Yes. I just have a uh, personal note. Tony Jones has been my friend for a long, long time. <laughs> Can you please tell her I said hi? I certainly will. She is our council person. I certainly will do that. Thank you very much. We have a lot of friends. No, she worked for <laughs> Bellair Puritus for a very long time. She's still there. I know that. <laughs> but I just, I just wanted to make highlight her. And I, I definitely will. Oh, good. In my moment, I will tell her. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. It. Thank you for your commitment. And, and Absolutely. Dale said, Do we have any other questions? The balance of your time is, uh, you're very busy and you have a lot to do. And, and just listening to your presentation shows me how committed you are. And jumping on this is just a added value of saying how wonderful committed you are. It gives me the range to do more. Oh. And the people in Maple Heights will be blessed by it. Oh, cool. That's a good perspective. Thank you. Sorry Thanks. for deviating. You're welcome. Any other questions from our panel council members? Nope. All right. Well, it is a pleasure to have you, and I think you're going to do an outstanding job on the Citizens Advisory. So Thank with you. that, uh, I moved. I was asked by the director that we make the second reading suspension. I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend resolution 2021-0242 with a recommendation for second reading suspension. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hearing no nays, this has been approved and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, clerk, would you please read the next item on the referred to committee? Resolution 2021-0250, confirming the county executive's reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities for the term January 1st, January 27th, 2022 to January 22nd, 2026. Thank you. And before we get started, I'd like to amend this legislation uh, to not include Moselle Jackson as she is not able to be here today. May I have a, um, I'll make a motion for that. May I have a second? Second, Sweeney. All in favor of, uh, of uh, amending this legislation, please say aye. 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 Hearing no nays, the legislation is now amended. All right. If we uh, can have uh, Director Pomerantz, please give us a background of this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pursuant to the provisions found in Ohio Revised Code, Section 5126, and on behalf of the county executive, we are happy to submit the following nominee for reappointment to the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Lisa M. Hunt, for a four-year term. This is a reappointment. And a little more background, just to let you know that the Board of Developmental Dis Disabilities is composed of seven members, and five of these members are appointed by the county and two appointed by the probate court. Uh, Executive Director of the Board of Developmental Disabilities, Kelly Petty, is also here to answer any questions. And we're happy to present Ms. Hunt, who's here today to help um, answer your questions. Thank you, and thank you for both coming forward. Please state your name again for the record. Good morning, I'm Kelly Petty, Superintendent and CEO of the Board of Developmental Disabilities. Uh, it's my pleasure, Ms. Baker and members of the committee, to introduce Lisa Hunt. Lisa is nearing completion of her second four-year term as a volunteer board member for the Board of Developmental Disabilities. She's seeking a third four-year term. Uh, Lisa brings a unique and important perspective as uh, from her role as a the uh, family engagement specialist for Cleveland Heights University Heights School District. Uh, she's also the parent of a young adult who is eligible for our services. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and the Council uh, uh, Committee. Um, my name is Lisa Hunt. 
as Kelly said, and I do serve our district as a family engagement specialist. But one of the most important jobs that I've had has been the parent of a child with disabilities. Uh, he's 21 years old now, and he has a brain abnormality that few understand. I can't even say I understand. Uh, so they say one in 5,000 uh, are identified. But because his journey has been so brave and so beautiful and has navigated even how I connect with others, I know that organizations like CCBDD are incredibly important in how we make space and how we make sure that people who bravely live with disabilities have the opportunity to thrive and work and live their best life. Um, it's been an honor to serve. I'm eager to continue to serve um, because I really believe in the work that the organization does, but I've also seen the fruits. Um, so we've been able to think in terms of how do we connect with school districts, but also making way for employment opportunities, um, and also to support families, which are critical um, as caregivers and making sure that they make space and help their uh, son, daughter, or, or loved one live their very best life. Good. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for your service. It is uh, truly uh, a gift to have someone like you, and especially with the experience that you have given over the last eight years um, to be part of this organization. And I uh, can't say enough for, um, for the work that you have given. So do we have questions for our guest, Ms. Hunt? This is, no. Oh, no, we are, I'm sure... Uh, very much appreciative of what it is that you have done and what you will continue to do. So with that, may I have a motion? So moved. Uh, I'll, I will complete that motion. I move to the full council this legislation, and I'll ask for a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hearing no nays. Hearing none, you have been approved. Thank, Thank you, you so your... much. Congratulations. Thank you. Excuse uh, me, Madam Chair. As amended. As amended. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hunt, I have something here for you. Here. All right, we have one last item on the agenda. Clerk, would you please read the last item on the agenda? Resolution number 2021-0251, confirming the county executive's appointment of Carolyn Eisenhart to serve on the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Board of Trustees for an unexpired term ending March 31st, 2024. All right, uh, Director Pomerantz, would you please give us some background? Thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the County Executive, I am happy to have Carolyn Eisenhardt here today to uh, fulfill an appointment for an unexpired term, replacing Gary Hansen. Uh, this is for the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. It is a board that is authorized by Ohio Revised Code, Chapter 3381. It is the public funder for arts and culture events and has awarded over 1,200 grants to more than 300 organizations serving Cuyahoga County residents. The board consists of five members appointed by the county executive subject to council confirmation. And uh, the executive director of this board, Jill Paulson, is also here to answer any questions. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, Carolyn Eisenhart. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was trying to think how to summarize um, my, myself, and I just want to say that uh, I've worked in the arts for 32 years now, which is really scary when you do the math. Um, and both as a, um, starting as a, working in the fine arts auction house and in a gallery um, for the, for 12 years, and just, you know, the arts have always been a part of um, a part of me, and uh, even you know, going back to when as a child we'd go to the art museum um, all the time. It was wonderful. But the arts in everyday communities um, that that CAC promotes, um, the work that they're doing is really important. But um, for the last um, ten years, I've served as the uh, board chair of the Lakewood Arts Festival, which is a self-funding organization, um, and it's just been really great to experience not only the the work of the artists selling out to the community, but um, bringing uh, music and performing arts and bringing um, like Studio Go from the Art Museum to the streets of Lakewood, um, so people can engage and create their own art and experience live theater and, and music. It's wonderful. Thank you. Any questions for our guest today, Ms. Eisenhart? Madam Chair. Yes, go right ahead, Councilman. I would just like to, uh, to say that I've known Carolyn for a long time and that, that she has been uh, 
very active in, in the community, in, in the arts, and in many other civic arenas. And, uh, and she has a lot to contribute and, and will be an outstanding member. And I, uh, I support her confirmation and encourage my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Sounds very good. Yes, Councilman Sweeney. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. How are you today? Good. Good. How are you? I told you I wouldn't ask a question, but I'll throw you a softball. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I've known Carolyn not as long as Dale, but her determination is um, unmatched. And being part of this for 32 years, I remember it's arts and culture has been long uh, for a while there, ignored. And then we had the levy, and uh, everybody got together. And we started having substantial strides in uh, the attention they deserve. And enlightenment of all the wonderful things that art and culture uh, can contribute that the general public really doesn't think about. And the funding sources are getting less. And I believe through your leadership, it's the tenaciousness that you have. It's not going to be uh, pushed to the side. And what are your thoughts on how we can continue the funding streams and what other partnerships that you're going to work with to help highlight the wonderful entities of culture and well, expanding the, the revenue stream would probably be something that Jill would um, be able to speak to. But, um, but I think for me, one of the really important things about this organization is, is how they're getting money into the smaller, in the hands of the smaller organizations. The really well-funded large organizations um, have multiple streams that, you know, a, a small group in Bay Village or a small group in Ward 7 may not have access to. And, um, you know, some groups get $100,000, but that twenty nine eighty, that, you know, whichever uh, I think was the um, Bay, uh, an organization in Bay gets, that makes such a huge difference for the Bay community for the, the performers that are engaged. Um, but the, the best thing about the group is that it does, they have been reaching out to those small organizations and they are working um, with um, their staff, which is an incredible staff, um, to, uh, to make sure that money is, that the small organizations don't get left out. Because it would be easy just to give all the money to Playhouse Square, you know. And through the chair, may I have one more? Mm -hmm, of course. And thank you. And bringing the stability to the board, because it started, and then there was a little bit of friction's too strong. And then for the last couple of years, it's been going. Uh, the philosophy has changed to exactly what you're talking about. And it's not dismiss the large ones, but it's uh, opening up the world of funding for all different kind of levels. Yeah. And that's how I see it, and I see the executive director behind if she wants to add some comments on just the overall uh, health or mindset of the organization now, which you're jumping into and helping help guide it, her direction. Please state your name. Jill Paulson, executive director, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. Pleasure to be here again today. Welcome. And nice to meet you in person. Um, to, your, to your question, um, Councilman Sweeney, through the chair, um, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture works in coalitions when you're talking about revenue um, and what we're looking at. We have seen a significant decrease as planned and anticipated over the 15 years. So we're working now with a new organization called Assembly for the Arts. It's an advocacy C3, C4. We're tag teaming with them on opportunities to look at some statewide options. And in the interim, we did receive some very important support through the county, through CARES dollars at the end of 2020. We're now looking at the ARPA dollars at a city level. And again, hopefully at some point um, through other sources, but it's kind of going to be this long game, if you will. As you know, politics have changed at a state level, so this idea I think we're finding, again, with our colleagues at Assembly, that we need to think about a statewide approach might be important, so stay tuned, but we definitely see it as an important role, both through our board with the five members there and, of course, now with Assembly for the Arts. And it's nice seeing you uh, non-Zoom. Yes. Yeah. And whatever role I or I imagine most of us will play in regards to support for yes. the state's uh, request or figuring out how they're going to support. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Madam Chair. Yes. I'm going to follow up with Jill. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I know that there was a proposal circulating to... Uh, 
expand the definition of tobacco products and 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 uh, and in that way create a broader base for the revenue source and and uh, and put an item on the ballot that would uh, effectuate that and so my question is is uh, is that still a live effort is that kind of dependent on uh, being part of a statewide approach? Wh where are we at on that initiative? I'm to the chair, to Councilman Miller. Yes, you do um, point out kind of a, a rigorous discussion and advocacy coalition that we were a part of this last summer through the state budget policy process. Obviously, we were not successful. The aim there was to expand the definition of tobacco. Currently, our revenue comes from cigarettes, 1.5 mils uh, per cigarette. And that is understandably going down as thankfully from a public health perspective, sales are going down. Um, that said, our efforts to kind of expand that definition of other tobacco products um, were not successful, not um, maybe appreciated as much on a statewide level. So that really, I think, gets back to pivoting to our joint approach with Assembly for the Arts as we think about ways um, that we uh, engage uh, Columbus leadership in a way that is of interest to them, which I think we're finding oftentimes means um, looking throughout the state, looking at the rural areas. Um, so I think we faced a lot of issues, quite frankly, that a lot of subject areas and uh, organizations faced in the Cleveland area as we approached working with the legislature in Columbus. So stay tuned. It's the daily work, but it's... Uh, um, it's right now the focus for us is a local focus in, our, in Assembly for the Arts on a county city level and the municipalities, um, knowing that the work with the state is something that will have to grow over time. Delicately said. Thanks for the update. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, I uh, believe that uh, Director Pomerantz wanted to do this in a second reading suspension. If, ple if possible, please. I will make a motion to... Uh, Recommend resolution 2021-0251 to the to the full council with recommendation to leadership to put it on for second reading suspension. Wait a second. 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 All in favor of this legislation say aye. 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 Any more nays? It has been passed. Congratulations. Thank you. And get out there and support the arts. There you go. I want to see right. you all. Openings, performances. <laughs> I told you she's just started right there. All right, uh, under miscellaneous business, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Bushahin. Bushahin, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I apologize, I did need to request second reading suspension of rules, primarily due to the creation of the new chief investigator position at the Sheriff's Department. Um, this position will oversee the sheriff's participation in a major uh, major crimes task force, and the position needs to be posted and filled. And if we don't do a second reading suspension, we'll most likely not get approved till uh, the beginning of the year. All right. Excuse uh, me, Madam Clark. Chair. This is for resolution number twenty twenty one zero two three nine. Yes. Do you need to read that into the? No. All right. So, if I may, resolution zero two three nine. Uh, may we have a motion to? Uh, have a suspension of the a um, second reading suspension of this legislation. Madam Chair, I move that our action on, on resolution 2021-0239 be reconsidered and that the, uh, the motion be amended to include a recommendation for second reading suspension. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have second. a second? Second. Councilman Gallagher, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Thank you. Hearing no nays, thank you. It's been passed. Good. All right. Um, so we are now under miscellaneous business. The only thing I want to say under miscellaneous business, if no one else has anything to say, uh, this is my first committee that I have chaired. Uh, kind of got through it. I appreciate my members and their assistance. But I can see that this is going to be you know, a very rewarding committee. Um, there are people that are working out there that are sometimes behind the scenes that you don't see every day and are working hard making this county the best it can possibly be, and some for those that can't speak for themselves. So uh, I'm looking forward to um, future committees, and we'll get this down to a science. 
I'm sure. Uh, but it will be, I think, a very rewarding committee, and I thank my members for, for being here and getting through this with me. Yes, Councilman. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I just want to thank you for the deference you gave me to talk a little bit more in depth about the arts and culture because it was nice to have them there and have that discussion. So I appreciate that. Madam Chair, Miller. I would like to uh, congratulate you on your appointment as chairperson of the Human Resources and Equity Committee. It's a uh, very, very important committee as it uh, affects almost everything that the county does. It, it, uh, it gives you an opportunity to have a broad perspective and, and uh, I know that you will do well and look forward to working with you. Thank you. I, I agree and I'm very privileged to be here and, and thankful for the opportunity. Um, and also I think that expanding upon those that come before us of what they do is absolutely what I encourage our members to do. So Councilman Sweeney and Councilman Miller and Councilman Gallagher, anytime you want to chime in and go beyond perhaps the person that's there and talk about what it is that they are involved in is always welcome. So if there's no other business, we are adjourned. <laughs>